What's happening, everybody? It's Wednesday, and we are talking trades. Who are we buying? Who are we selling? Let's break down the news and the notes, the injuries, and another sensational Thursday night matchup. Thanks, NFL Scheduling, for helping us out. Don't miss a minute. Losing your hair can be devastating, but thankfully, Roman makes it easy to treat hair loss without ever leaving the house. Connect with a U.S. licensed physician for a free online evaluation. Then, Roman delivers treatment right to your door with free two-day shipping. Go to GetRoman.com slash footballers to start your free online visit. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from PristineAuction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Glad to be here. <laughs> ah, good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whenever good evening. you're listening. Good evening. Good evening. It's morning for me. Good it's evening. a ha- it's a hat morning. Oh, that means you stink. A hundred percent of hat mornings come on days when I have to bring something my kids forgot. <laughs> In their backpacks to school for them <laughs> and drop them off before work, believe it or not. Those are perfectly corollary statistics. Mm. Yeah. Welcome in Wednesday, October 9th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway. Excited to be with you. Find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. Still giving away a signed Saquon jersey. Footclangiveaway.com if you want in on that. How you guys doing today? Doing pretty well. I got a solid 11 hours yeah. of sleep. This was like is, a child's amount of sleep. It was in Well, yeah. I mean, I went to bed before my children. Your brain's still developing. I, that, well, we hope. <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, we were watching a movie as a family, fell asleep, and then I decided when that was over, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to bed. You're going to roll it into the full sleep. Yeah, and I am mm. usually the opposite. I'm like five and a half hours. Like midnight is pretty much bedtime, or at least when you go upstairs time. 7.30 for me last night, boys. Wow. Nicely done. You're going to be you. so sharp this morning. Yeah, or not awake yet. One of the We're going to find out. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> Mike, you doing all right? I am doing mighty fine okay, this morning. Okay, good. Mighty Thank fine. You. All right, it's Wednesday. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, last week we did an NFC East edition of Buy or Sell. Jason came out on top. He was right on three of the five Buy or Sells. Right on everything except the Cowboys. The Cowboys offense, uh, I didn't see... Having as much success with Dak and Cooper, but uh, they did. Yeah, Cooper ended up the wide receiver three, Dak the quarterback five. It didn't feel that way for most of the game. But that game, that was one of those matchups. Sometimes games go really, really fast, too fast as a fantasy owner. You want more time. If you're a Patrick Mahomes owner, it was just the clock was dripping away. It was painful. Yes. The Colts were wasting the clock. In this, in this game... It seemed like it lasted forever. I mean, I, teams were scoring quickly, and I couldn't believe it. Especially considering you watch the beginning of that game, and you go, "Oh yeah, Dak stinks." This is one of those down games. They actually have a competitive matchup. Two picks right off the bat. Bad news. Oh no, there he's on fire. They're yeah. doing just fine. This game is going to last forever. And you were right. Zach Ertz broke the touchdown drought. Got his first touchdown of the year. All right, we're doing an AFC North edition of buy or sell today and let's start here we had the new big news yesterday Jalen Samuels knee scope out for a month James Conner this week facing the Chargers buy or sell 75 total yards on the week I will buy 75 total yards for James Conner that doesn't seem like a tall task to me the only guy in the backfield you include receiving yardage what do you guys think I think it's a I think it's an easy line it's an easy buy for me you've got Hodges throwing the ball, which means you're going to need to run. You've got the Chargers, who are not great against the run, plus passing work now that Samuels is out. Yeah, Connor could get some like a 20-yard pass. 
pad you're, those numbers. Yeah, I mean, whatever it's going to take, I think he gets over 75 yards if you're combining both rushing and passing. You're confusing James Conner with Odell Beckham Jr., the end around running back slash quarterback to pad his sweet stats. Maybe. All right, so you're are you buying my Yeah, I'm unanimous here. All right. Juju seventy five receiving yards against the Chargers. He has seventy five or more in four of five games. However, I will sell this one. I I've been fooled once. Mike, you beat me on a water bet with seventy nine yards. But I'm gonna sell this with Hodges against the Chargers. It is a tough matchup with a third string quarterback. I love Juju and I hope I'm wrong, but I am selling this. For sure. Yeah, Juju will need Devlin to make a deal. Oh, with himself. no, 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 with the with himself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, this, sorry, we're being boring. I'm gonna sell. You know, all this. right. Joe Mixon against Baltimore. Does he top 100 total yards for the second straight week? He had not done it in weeks one through four. Although I think he had 96 combined yards uh, three weeks ago. So it was it, very close. Gotcha. Yeah, I will buy it. Mm. Joe Mixon, 100 total yards. I think this might be the first one we have some different answers on. But I'll buy Joe Mixon against the Baltimore defense living more on its laurels than its actual talent right now. So the perceptually saying Joe Mixon against Baltimore doesn't sound great, but I think I think he's got over 100 total yards. Yeah, this is this is a really good line here. I kept going back and forth before the show trying to decide if I buy or sell. I am going to go the other way. I'm going to sell on this one. I think that the Bengals uh, are going to do their best to make Baltimore look like the defense of yesteryear. I will sell as well. All right, and then o Odell Beckham Jr., will he beat his combined receiving lines from week four and five? So weeks four and five combined receiving four catches, 47 yards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will buy a healthy – beating of this line uh a healthy Seattle, beating yes i'm i'm what? look we're gonna he talk trades. He'll, he'll buy a healthy beating a healthy beating of this line i'll i'll go ahead and say over 50 yards huh. um yeah but will he get more than four receptions i believe he will mike for, for the sanity of fantasy players everywhere yes I will, i'm gonna give the the boost of confidence i will buy it so now now four receptions does not is not a buy We've got to out right. You've got to have five for forty-eight over that. I yeah, you got to do it. You got to. It's five. whatever Brooks says. Brooks, what what's the line here? Do you got to beat the receptions and the yards, or do you just have to beat the fantasy point total? He's got to beat both. So five catches and more than forty-seven yards. Yeah. Eww. I know Andy's wanting to sell it. Eww. I'll buy it. Yeah. I'll buy it. And then Mark Andrews, does he return to the top five at the tight end position? If you look at what Lamar Jackson has done. His yards per attempt has come down dramatically I think every single week. I understand he's taking what the defenses are giving him. He he likes to run. But the last two last three weeks, Mark Andrews, tight end twenty eight, tight end nine, tight end thirteen. After the hot start, he's been kind of banged up, limited practice work. Does he return to the top five this week against Cincinnati? Sure. I'll buy it. <laughs> Cincinnati's not a good, not a good team. They're all in five. That was a buy. That was you at the front of the grocery store, and then the the row of candy yes. showed up, and you're just like, yeah, I'll, just throw one on the, yeah, fine. throw it on there. Okay, they taste good. I'll get one. <laughs> I guess I'll buy some candy. Where yeah. you at, Mike? I, I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna I'm gonna sell. Top five is. I guess not that hard to get into for a tight end, especially right now with four teams on bye. So the probability should actually be a bye, but I'm concerned about Lamar Jackson. Uh, we're, we got a little bit of a, a little bit of a mirage thing happened with those first three weeks with the full rejuvenation, or I should say breakout, of Lamar Jackson's passing attack. Yeah, I'm going to buy this. I think the matchup is great. I love the fact that Evan Ingram and Mar and uh, Darren Waller yeah. are I – mean, Darren Waller's for sure not playing this week because he's on buy, and Evan Ingram might not play. It makes me feel like it's like top seven. Maybe really. it, it'd be worthwhile to rename the Dolphins the Miami Mirage this year mm. because if you play them – you, you you're distorting everything ah, about your team. I the mean, pads, the, the the stat patterns. Yeah, Lamar Lamar started his season against the Miami Dolphins, 
And not that he's not a great quarterback, but he's not that great. He's well, not going to do that every week because Miami has a special way with your statistics. Sometimes you have that friend, like you're feeling down about yourself, and then your good buddy shows up like, oh, man, you are what are you to pick me up. You've been working out. <laughs> I mean, you're like, what's going on here? You look great. I ha no, I haven't been working out. Oh, you look like it. <laughs> I've done literally nothing different except I played the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's buy or sell. From Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, Chris. Herndon is not practicing on Wednesday. No, not not because of a, a gaze from Adam Gaze. Mm. That put him on the sideline. But gaze no, he pulled from his... from the B-hole. He pulled his hamstring. Now, you can't blame the... The bee hole for the hamstring. No, right? you can. No, you cannot. No, well, but are they, con are they connected? I would imagine that yesterday's <laughs> news. <laughs> they're close That's to one another the at the top goes. of the hamstring. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they, you know, they I assume that yes, <laughs> yesterday's news <laughs> from to Adam Gaze. Uh, you know, when he's like, "Oh, he's he's going to have to earn it." He he obviously knew last Friday was yeah. the hamstring. Just just go ahead and say like, "Well, he's dealing with something." He's dealing with a hamstring issue. We'll see how he progresses. Seriously, what, what is the problem with doing that? Instead of this, oh, I'm going to evaluate. Say, well, he was he was trying to get ready on Friday. Have you he ever thought, Mike, about making peace with the realities of your life? One of them being coaches, coach speak. That's what they're going to do. It doesn't matter. That's, they have this hyper-protectiveness. They, they get injected with a serum, which is, I'm going to protect my team at all costs, and I believe – spouting lies or equivocating on everything is the key to success in football. You ever going to make peace with that? No. <laughs> yeah, I could have answered that for Mike. Like, you ever going to make peace with all these coaches uh, punting it from, you know, the 45-yard line on fourth and inches? No. No, of course not, because it's stupid. Because you believe that you're, one of your purposes in being born is to stand up against this kind of buffoonery? Look, tyranny, lies, look, <laughs> all of it. It's a fight for justice Coach from speak. this show. Yeah, thank you. Someone's listening out there. Some, and some up and coming, do it. Some up-and-coming coach. Our listeners. Some of you will be professional coaches one day. That's a fact. <laughs> some of One of you will coach a team one day. Remember us. All right, Cam Newton been ruled out week six against the Bucks. Have you guys heard that he's his goal is to be back right after the bye week? Is that true? That, that, I'm just asking, like, that's what I had seen. That was the last report I had heard. It was it was the, the week that made the most sense with the timeline and the schedule. So, yeah, that's still my expectation. Are you – The team is holding up for him. That's the nice thing are, on the uh, win-loss column. Are you going to your waiver wire then and stashing Cam Newton if you can? Because their, their bye week is next week. Yeah, I'd be willing to do that. Yeah, I think stashing him for two – look, when he comes back – and he might not be back after the bye week. That's the one worry here. If, I, if I knew for sure he was going to be back, it would be an absolute yes. Go ahead and stash him. But if you knew he was going to be back, then you're, you'll are you have competition. Other people will be going to try and pick him up as well. Yeah, if you've got the roster spot. All right, Kyle used check sideline four to six weeks with a sprained MCL. I think we mentioned that yesterday, but I'm not – look, he's great. He's a great fullback. He helps this offense move. After he went out, we still saw this offensive line do some work. I'm not that concerned about the production. I, I think I think Kyle Shanahan will overcome. Yeah, I agree. I mean, are they going to run for another 300 yards? No, probably not. But they weren't going to do that with Kyle Juszczyk anyways. I, I think that, yeah, Shanahan's going to scheme around it. He knows he's got no Kyle Juszczyk. He's going to you know, use the personnel he has and make them good. And as far as the running game goes – it will be just fine. All right. A couple of quick other notes. James Washington's going to miss a few weeks. Normally, I would care if, if I thought I could go, you know, oh, now I can guarantee start Deontay Johnson. But, you know, James Washington didn't have a big role in the offense, and you're on a third-string quarterback. Brian Flores, starting quarterback situation is, quote, settled. <laughs> Josh, Josh Rosen will start the remainder of the season. Mike, we, you have to be happy with this. This is no I more am. equivocating. This is just, hey, we are where we are. We're trusting the process. Josh Rosen is Gives such us the best chance to lose. He's the start of the rest of the season. I mean, it's very likely Rosen will be the starting quarterback for the majority of the season 
for two separate teams that have the number one pick in back-to-back years. That is true. That means if you are a team that is thinking about that 2021 one, if you if that's got, what, oh, go ahead and trade, trade for trade for Rose, and he can get you to the promise. It's land. like the uh, what was it a Ryan Reynolds movie where everyone he dates as soon as they they break up with him they find the person that they, they find true love they find the the person they marry oh man and so everyone just tries to date him well he's, this is Josh Rosen's life now Josh Rosen is going to be dating another team next year franchise oh, man. franchise quarterback finder Mike, Josh Rosen what's dropping twelve dollars on Gerald Everett I did. Interesting. Yeah, our, our waivers just went through. This is our weekly drop it like it's hot reminder. Players are released into the, you know, every time the waivers go through, you forget players are being released into the free agent pool. Make sure you check your waiver wire, see what happened. Interesting. Yeah, Mike went after some Gerald Everett. I was curious what Jonathan Hilleman would be, how much someone would pay. I got Looks him like for Jason six. got him for $6. Are you playing him this week? I uh, might have to. Do you, you want to know what dissuaded me from spinning up on him? The Thursday night football matchup against the, <laughs> the Patriots? <laughs> That's it, what's going to dissuade me. Sure. Yeah, and it was just kind of – obviously, there's still a Saquon rumors. I don't think Saquon plays. But then there's Elijah Penny that got some work last week too. And I'm like, man, if I'm looking at Jonathan Hilleman splitting with Elijah Penny against the Patriots – I did bid on him, but I bid like $2 of fab. So. To me, it was one of those, like, my opponent really needed a flex option. This was as much keep away as it was for me until Andy traded Emmanuel Sanders to my opponent. Thank you. Forgot to update this bid. All right, so don't forget, check your waiver wire. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of impactful fantasy football news. Download the free app today. Today's show, we're talking trades. It's that time of year. What? Who are you targeting? Who do you need to let go? Before we get into it, I want to thank today's sponsor. We've used we've used them since the beginning. I mean, since the beginning, and that's Zapier. When you're running your own business, you've got this to do list that's never ending. We got interviewed uh, by uh, a little while back, and they asked, "What are some of the keys to growing your business?" And my answer was automation. When you are limited in staff, when you're limited in, in what you need to do, you need to kind of build out automation in your life. We use Slack and we use Zapier. And Zapier feeds our Slack channel with tons of information. Um, you can basically do tons of different things. You can instantly engage with leads. You can send them to a CRM or a spreadsheet. You can notify your team instantaneously. It basically has a bunch of tools where you can automate tons of processes get uh, information surfaced wherever you're paying attention. They basically work with 1,500 business applications. So you've got all these different possibilities of uh, you know, automation processes that you can create, and you don't need a code or a developer to do it. If you haven't tried it, you need to check it out. Right now through November, you can try Zapier free for two weeks by going to zapier.com slash footballers. Now, let me give you the spelling on that. Z-A-P-I-E-R.com slash footballers. You get a 14-day trial to check it out. Huge key to our success. And we want to thank Pepsi. Yeah, Pepsi. Another huge key to my success. A huge key to our <laughs> success around here is Pepsi because we love celebrating. And when you celebrate, you crack open a Pepsi. You win the game, you crack open a Pepsi. It takes celebrations to the next level. I mean, imagine if every time Austin Eckler is scoring these touchdowns, grabbing oh, his my goodness. guitar, his air guitar. He would have he would have no time to do anything. Why aren't players but hiding, having Pepsi? Why aren't they hiding Pepsi like in the you know, you remember the you know, you hide the cell phone <laughs> well, up under the goalpost? Well, Jason, because that draws a penalty these days. Yeah, but Pepsi. <laughs> You know, that's what their answer would be. They'd be like, this is the yeah, officials. But Pepsi. Yeah, they'd say this is a sponsor of the NFL. And then the ref would take the flag and he'd put it in his pocket. He'd say, that's how you celebrate. And say, hand me a, hand me a Pepsi. Yeah. He, it was a <laughs> penalty on the other team, 15 yards. You got 15 <laughs> yards for cracking open a Pepsi. That's what you just did, Eckler. Every time you score, crack open a Pepsi, get 15 yards for your team. That's what I do. That's what we do. That's what you should do. Pepsi, it's the official sponsor of the NFL, always reminds you to be celebrating. Let's talk trades. All right, so we're going to 
discuss some of our favorite trade targets right now in fantasy football, some of the players that we are actively trading away. I'm sure this discussion will venture into the territory of selling high, buying low, certain players. Do you let them go when they're at their lowest possible value? Do you trade for them when they're at their highest? And then we we ping the foot clan. We said, hey, what are some of the questions that you have regarding your trade targets or what do you do with certain players and, and whether you should trade them or not? So let's go ahead and talk through some of our favorite trade targets right now. Jason, why don't you kick us off? Sure. Uh, so my favorite trade targets, I've got a, a handful, but the ones that I want to bring up to start first is Lev Bell. Le'Veon Bell, I think is an absolutely perfect trade target. He's been pretty disappointing recently. You have players who have drafted him that have not gotten a lot out of the backup quarterback, the bad matchups, um, that, you know, that they've been through with the, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, the New England Patriots, uh, th those are those are rough. However, he is past his bye. They're about to get their quarterback. He is the centerpiece of this offense. Their schedule opens up very nicely. Uh, you know, so uh, as the season goes along, he's going to be one of the. I mean, who's getting more volume than Love Bell? You got Christian McCaffrey, Saquon if he's out there. Eh, that's maybe the end of the list uh, he's, he's he's near the top I mean I was looking that up to, to check on it rushing attempts per game he's number nine right now basically the same he's, he's basically tied with Chubb Carson carry on cook and him I'm on board with you big time I, I looked at making a trade for Lev Bell this morning their situation has been as I mean he, he's near the bottom of the league in yards per carry right now because all they can do is hand him the ball and hope something happens you don't have a quarterback that can function you've been working with a third stringer Getting Darnold back, being through the bye, knowing what they paid for him. Nowhere to go but up right now. And he, he's not destroying your team even with the production he's giving you right now because he's, you know, he's doing what – putting up David Montgomery lines. I mean, he's not destroying your team, so I love that pick. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is, you know, he, he has not been great. And that means you're not paying – you know, go – you know who you should trade for right now? Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> He's so good, but you can't, you can't get <laughs> right. McCaffrey. So it's like, you've got to find those players that, you know, you don't necessarily want to trade for the guys that have just been completely washed. Just have, you know, OJ Howard, he's definitely a buy low. You can trade for him off the waiver wire. Right, but you don't want to buy him. You're looking for players I that have been him. okay. I caught him in my money league. Yeah, I don't, I mean, you you, you okay. have to. If OJ Howard for me is, if it happens, if the breakout happens, I'm very happy for him. I'm very happy for the man, but I'm not. I'm not sitting around waiting for it to happen you're, anymore. You're rooting for your ex to. Yes. Get a, I hope she marries a great guy someday, but yes. it's not going to be me. Yep. I hear you. Did you see OJ Howard last night? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, that was unbelievable. You see that Bruce Arians little uh, one-handed, left-handed. Yeah, one-handed catch at the uh, Tampa Bay game. Bear. Yeah, not the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. Correct. Tampa. Unfortunately, yeah, the Tampa Bay Rays game where he was in the stands and caught. Uh, does that mean he's at the same amount of catches at the baseball game as he does the football game? That is exactly so. what it means. But uh, as uh, one of our painful. writers pointed out, far more air yards <clears throat> on that baseball. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, a lot. All right, um, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm targeting Cooper Cup. You better, See, you better be ready to open up the wallet, then go to the ATM. Have it empty out again into your wallet. That would be the Christian McCaffrey attempt, right? No, it's uh, not. Because Christian McCaffrey has a long track record of being a top five player. Cooper Cup does not have that perception in fantasy leagues, especially, especially a lot of normal leagues. Cooper sure. Cup okay, home is league, sure. at Cooper Cup certainly playing at his ceiling, but it takes time for a player to play at their ceiling and finish seasons and not be, you know he had the injury last year so he didn't kind of perceptually come into the year as the number one on this team I don't see anything changing with Cooper Cup but when you can come and offer players for Cooper Cup like I don't know Odell Beckham Jr. a big name with five plus years of performance and you can make offers all I'm trying to do here is tell you that if you go trade for Cooper Cup I think you're trading for somebody that will continue to perform at a top five level. I don't see any reason why Cooper Cup is not a top five finisher 
on the year. I see an outcome where Odell Beckham Jr. isn't. In the last two years when Cooper Cup has played the whole game, he averages uh, a fantasy points that makes him the wide receiver one. You're the, telling not, me you like can't. Like over that time span, no one else has been better. You're telling me you can't go out there and offer Michael Thomas and get Cooper Cup and maybe something back? Because I don't know if you're going to get something Because back. of name value? But I think you could offer. That's Michael the kind Thomas of situation I'm talking about. There are even Julio Jones or DeAndre Hopkins. If you can go get Cooper Cup and something potentially, then I would try to angle that name recognition. Julio Jones is a monstrous name. Cooper Cup is not. And there's a lot of leagues where people, yeah, they want the big name. I'm telling you, Cooper Cup is a big name, but you don't know it yet in some leagues. I can. Buy more into that. Like per, perhaps you could flip Michael Thomas for Cup Plus, perhaps. But I bet you right now, in the vast majority of leagues, you go to the Coop, you have Odo Beckham. You say, "I'll trade you Beckham for Cooper Cup." They're going to turn it down instantly because I, I don't disagree. Because those the, the people who have Cooper Cup, they're winning, and so so they're not going to trade that away. So while he doesn't have the big name, what he does have built up now is fantasy victories for these teams. The other thing that you can do is take a big name that isn't performing, even if it's Beckham or Juju. You tell, Go send Juju plus something to go get Cooper Cup. I would be shocked. Yeah, but I I would be willing to send Odell Beckham plus something to get Cooper yeah, Cup. Yeah, I would be willing to do that. If you look at the first five games from last year for Cooper Cup, right, that – we he was he was unbelievably good, and the whole reason he wasn't super highly drafted this year was the ACL. You didn't think he was going to get back to the level he was at last year this quickly. He has clearly it's fine, but his his pace from last year was 131 receptions, 1600 yards, and 13 touchdowns. That's the wide receiver one. All right, Mike, who's a buy low candidate for you right now, or a couple of them? I'm going to go with a combo here. I, uh, because I really want to highlight what's about to happen with the Buffalo Bills. First off, they are a good team. Their their defense is strong. Their offense is getting it done. They are on the bye week, so it may be easier to get these players. But John Brown, and I'm even going to throw in Devin Singletary here because it might be a lot easier to get Devin Singletary. He's had the hamstring injury the past couple weeks. It's looked like he might play, but he hasn't been able to – to heal up enough to, to be there. But I expect after the bye week that Devin Singletary is going to give it a go. And here's what's happening for Buffalo after this week. At home against Miami. At home against Philadelphia. At home against Washington. And then on the road against Cleveland and Miami. I mean, those are th three unbelievable home matchups. And then at, you get to tack on two great road r road games as well. Like the Buffalo Bills are primed. If Josh Allen is on your waiver wire, I am picking him up to stash, assuming that I'm not living like a great quarterback situation. But John Brown has been John Brown has been good. He hasn't been he hasn't been elite or great. He's only scored one time, but his target volume, his receptions, his yardage total, and his air yards say that John Brown will be scoring very very soon. Just just hold tight like Zach Ertz. The volume was there. You know that the touchdowns are coming. The touchdowns will be coming for John Brown. And if the team uses Devin Singletary kind of the way that he was ramping up to become before the, the hamstring injury, then you are stealing a running back too for the second half of the season. Yeah, I, I will say this. I've, I've stashed Josh Allen everywhere I can. It's tough to trade for players on their buy sometimes, especially while you might have players on the – it just might be – I get it, but it also makes it easier. It's a, it's a leverage point against that owner. Sure. So if, if your roster allows for, uh, you know, the extra spot and your your opponent that has John Brown needs someone, you might be able to steal them steal him uh, a little cheaper. I, I can buy into that. And Devin Singletary, this is the time – you know, he's still available in like 35% of leagues – People dropping him because of the buy. Watch the drop it like it's hot for his name. He's he's a definite pickup and stash right now. We were talking about how bad waivers right. were. Uh, Singletary's a guy to to pick up. Um, the next name I'm going to throw out there is Josh I, Gordon. I, I am with this one. I don't believe Andy is from the facial reaction that he made when I told him yesterday I was targeting Josh Gordon. But I, I look. 
I think he is the clear alpha wide receiver as far as just he is, you know, he is a a really good wide receiver for Tom Brady. As the season goes on, they're not going to just have nothing but cakewalk matchups where they don't necessarily need him. And if if you look the at the league him, is looking into that, Jason. Yeah, they're trying they're, to fix they're changing this. the back end of the schedule. Yeah, because we got to got to make things easy for the Patriots. But even still, over the last three games, eleven targets, seven targets, eight targets. He is involved in a great offense, but you know what hasn't come? The touchdowns. I don't think Josh Gordon's going to finish the year with one touchdown for this team. So that means he is a buy low, a guy that I think you can play, start, have big weeks from too. He's he's not that guy that's going to go out there and it's like, okay, he's okay. He's He has the talent to go out there and have, you know, 150 yards and a touchdown uh, you know, in a couple big plays. So he, he's a guy that isn't going to cost you much at all to get. I think there's some positive regression coming for Gordon in the touchdown category. I mean, he, like you said, he's not going to have one on the course of the year. But last year we saw some inconsistency. The team goes a different direction at times. If they can lean on the running game, they will. Last year we saw a couple of 100-yard games. I think you will get a couple games out of him. But he seems a player with a little bit wider range of outcomes than somebody you would consider a normal alpha on the on the team. There there are games where he'll have three for thirty two or, you know, four for forty one. And if he doesn't score, then you're disappointed. That's what I'm more afraid of. But the matchup should get more difficult. So Brady should have to throw the ball a little bit more. Um it's it's I don't mind it because of the target volume. If the target volume was lower, weeks one and two, you saw four and five, one of those with Antonio Brown. But it, it has gone up. He hasn't done a lot with it. So I don't mind it. I think you can probably get him cheap, and that's kind of part of the key to this. I'm going to throw Kyler Murray out there. I'd be targeting Kyler Murray right now. He's the quarterback 11 on the season. He has four touchdowns in five games, passing touchdowns. He has zero in the last two weeks, yet he scored on the ground in both of those weeks. The running volume's going up. The success on offense is going up because he's running the ball more. So they're going to stick with that plan. He's going to feel more and more comfortable in this offense. And we talked about the Cardinals are scoring on 30% of red zone drives or, or opportunities in the red zone. That's not going to persist. They're going to be able to get back towards at least the league average at that point. The passing touchdowns are going to come. And if Kyler Murray throws one and runs one, and then you get the yardage on the ground, he's going to be a consistent top fantasy performance. And those days are coming. Yeah, for Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray in 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 four point leagues is is the quarterback seven. He he's been a quarterback the last two weeks with zero passing, passing touchdowns. Yeah, zero. He's been a quarterback one both of those weeks. Yeah, I just think he's he's a great buy low opportunity right now as this team figures it out. And he is a rookie. He's getting more and more comfortable in each and every week. He doesn't have Christian Kirk back yet, who's a big part of the passing offense. Kirk should be back maybe this week, if not then in a couple of weeks. So I think Kyler, Kyler Murray is a buy low opportunity where you're going to lean on the fact that the rushing yardage is there and he can have blow up games when he, something goes right in weeks three and four. He had a average depth of target, <clears throat> excuse me, of only five yards. It jumped back up this past week to 10.2. So it, I get, I, I agree with you. Andy. I think that he's becoming more and more comfortable in, in the offense, in the NFL, and the the fact that his baseline is so safe, like Lamar Jackson, even even a, I was kind of poo pooing Lamar Jackson's passing attack. He's still a solid quarterback one, just because of the rushing, how how fantasy football works. So I'm with that, and I would I'll just combo that with the growth of Kyler Murray. I think Larry Fitzgerald is a good trade target right now. Larry came out of the gates really really hot, and has net has since disappointed that if you drafted Larry you've been disappointed the past couple weeks I think that's the type of pendulum swing that you can go in and get him for you know pretty cheap maybe even a bench player and say you know you know Larry it's it's kind of falling off I'll let me take him off your hands and then you stash him and wait for the return all right now players were looking to actively shop now bear in mind you have to be smart when you're trading players, you have to remember some tendencies about your league mates. You have to remember who they like or who they had a crush on in preseason. This is part of the, you know, we're not in your league. You're in your league. You have the context of the opponents in your league and what, you know, the Charger fan, right? In your league that just wants more Chargers. That's going to be part of the strategy here when you unload players. 
and you need to capitalize on narrative and things like that. I think you should. I don't know what you can get for him, but I would not be expecting David Montgomery to break out anytime soon. Mm. David Montgomery, it hasn't happened. and He's back to my old David Montgomery. Oh, no. No. There's, there's problems. Problem number one, snap count. 50-50 with Tariq Cohen pretty much last week. Problem number two, not being used in the passing game. One reception last week. Here's his receptions for five games. One, three, three, one, one. You need that. You need him to be. This was not. This is not the Kareem Hunt, Hunt implementation in Chicago. Here's his matchups coming up. First, he's on bye this week. Then you've got the Saints, Chargers, Philadelphia in Philadelphia, Detroit. I'm not excited about that opportunity. Then the Rams. What's the game script going to be in those situations? Is Tariq Cohen going to be on the field significantly? How about as a runner? Have we seen signs of life? Not really. No. You know, he's not... <laughs> He's not broken any big plays. 11 for 25 against Oakland. 21 for 53 against Minnesota. I like that volume. Yeah, 21 against Minnesota yeah. was great because they they had the game script in their favor. I just think that we're not really going to see much from him. He saved his week last week by getting into the end zone, and we haven't seen the runner that we saw in the preseason. And we can't keep believing the narrative that it's going to happen at any moment. So... I think he's. I would try to sell him on on somebody that's hyped about him or the Bears or David Montgomery coming into the season because right now I don't. I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, and I'm going to sell the guy that the Bears sold so that they could get David Montgomery, and that is Jordan Howard. Oh, you're going to sell him? And I'm actively buying him. This is a perfect conversation yeah. then. Yeah. Because Jordan Howard can be sold. He is a quality running back right now who's the goal line back, who's got touchdowns in back-to-back games, has looked awesome. People will be buying Jordan Howard like Andy. Yep. But here's the thing. Last two games. Back-to-back-to-back games, Jason. Uh, you forgot it to back. Okay, I forgot mm. it to back. Uh, but Tuberculosis. You know, back-to-back-to-back, uh, the, the Packers and the Jets, a big part of the back-to-back-to-back. The schedule coming up for... Jordan Howard is not good. Cowboys, Bills, Bears, Patriots for the next month. I'm not loving that matchup. I don't think Jordan Howard is just going to all of a sudden take over and keep getting better as the season goes on. If anything, you know, rookies tend to get better as time goes on. They learn the offense. Miles Sanders could get more involved. Jordan Howard isn't a must ship, but he's a guy that if I can capitalize on him being really good over the last few weeks, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to to try to flip someone like Jordan Howard because I don't believe that Jordan Howard stays where he's been the last three weeks. Yeah, and I I would be buying him from you. You can come find me. I, I think Jordan Howard, Doug Peterson, the comments he's made about him, he said he's his lead back. This is an offense that's going to improve with Deshaun Jackson coming back, more goal line opportunities. Howard has been one of the most effective goal line backs in football for years now. And he's on a great football team. So I think if I know I'm getting 13 to 15 carries from Jordan Howard on a team that I believe in and he's around the goal line, I'm trying to buy him because people think, oh, wow, he's, he's stumbled into these touchdowns and regressions coming. And maybe it does against some of those opponents, but I'm actually buying. Mike, I'd love to hear you weigh in. I think I can get him cheap. That's why I'm going after him. I think you can get him cheap, and if you – in fact, can then I'm somewhat interested, but that schedule that's a that's a gauntlet for not, not just Jordan Howard but Philadelphia in general. So I'm concerned. We had a Foot Clan person, Curtis Stewart, on Facebook. He says, "Would you know? Would he give up Josh Gordon to get Jordan Howard? Straight up, he's an Eagles fan, so I want him." These, by the way, that's that's yep. kind of what you need to pay attention to in your league sometimes. That that that's a team dependent trade to me. I mean, if you have enough wide receivers to give up Josh Gordon, I think that's fine. I don't think Jordan Howard is a guarantee of production, but I'm looking at him saying, hey, if he continues to emerge, he's run well. I don't know. Yeah, whenever it's a wide receiver for a running back, it's always team dependent. You, you, We can't advise anybody trade away a running back. Like I, I'm buying Josh Gordon and I'm selling Jordan Howard, so this is perfect for me. But we can't just tell everybody out there, yeah, do that deal because – if that leaves you with a hole at running back, 
that's never going to be good. I would rather take Jordan Howard and some other good piece to try to flip into Lev Bell or something like that. And to, to piggyback on that, make sure your running back situation is stout. Like I have been answering a lot of trade questions recently where, okay, I'm going to trade this running back away for this wide receiver because I'm solid here. And then you're left with two pretty good running backs and a, and a third guy you can sort of start. Like that's You're not good then. You're not good at running back. And – because you have you have the bye weeks coming up and you have one injury to the position that gets hurt the most and you're hosed man so don't don't view two decent starters and one backup option as being stout at running back know that you are taking a chance by by living that life yeah and and like you said on yesterday's show you're entering the time of year when wear and tear the schedule the Thursday night games running into you know, right after a Sunday game, there's more risk for injury. There's more opportunities for players that you've been counting on to miss a game here or a game there. Depth has always gotten you by well in a lot of our leagues, Mike. Yeah. Uh, you you want to sell Mark Ingram. I do. And this is – he's not an absolute must sell, but similar to you were talking about Cooper Cup, like Mark Ingram has name value in the fantasy football world, and the dude has six rushing touchdowns. Through five weeks, that, I mean that's that's not going to keep up, and so I'm just I'm I'm interested in in seeing what I can get in a return for Mark Ingram. Like, can I go out? That's the question for me: is what are you looking for if you're going to sell him high? I'm looking, who do you put in the tier above him? Because I agree, his schedule has been conducive to what he's done too, and the touchdown regression. Right. It's not it's not that I'm looking to upgrade my running back. It's look it's that I'm hoping to move laterally at the running back position or what I perceive and get as, another piece and then upgrade my wide receiver. That's that's a move that I'm willing to make. I'm not just holding on to Mark Ingram going, man, the Ravens run team, six touchdowns. So let, let me give you a hypothetical then. Is it a lateral move to you to move Mark Ingram and get David Johnson? Oh, uh, that would be a – I mean, depending on your league, I would s say that's an upgrade. Okay. Like if you're in a PPR, heck yes, I would do that. Uh, what about uh, Chris Carson? That's Chris the name I was going to – bring up I was just looking at him where he's 16th and half point PPR you can sell the fact that that Mark Ingram in half point is the running back six go get Chris Carson upgrade your run your wide receiver situation okay. you agree with that Jay yeah I I do agree with that I, I maybe think wait that, wait until Cincinnati <laughs> yeah maybe it's over if I mean, you if you look at the you know that first monster game that he had against Miami we talk about you know th those skew the numbers take that game out, he's still on pace for 16 touchdowns the rest of the season. So he is their goal line back, and I think they'll have opportunities. That's why you're saying he's not a must-sell. He's going to be good. But he's only on pace for about 1,000 yards, which is, uh, you know, for for if you're going to be like one of the top running backs, you're usually uh, much higher than just hitting the, the quad. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's do this. It's time for Rapid Round. All right, I'm going to go through questions from the Foot Clan. Bobby Woods for the Walrus. Yes. Uh, no, I would take Bobby Woods. I would take Bobby Woods as well. Robert Woods for Mike Evans in a PPR league. Give me Evans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. zero will uh, do that to you. It does, but yes, I would trade Robert Woods for Mike Evans, yes. Ooh, from Instagram. Robert Woods for DJ Chark. Do, 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 do. I'll take Chark. I'll take Woods. I will take I will take Chark. Look, for to do this trade, if I'm moving Robert Robert Woods to get Chark, I'm doing the I'm I'm hopefully cashing in on the name and I can I get see. something else. Well, but so straight up you wouldn't? I I would be on the Woods side on this one. Straight Brandon up Cooks might miss a week. Woods is still involved. Straight up it would be very difficult to sell the name value and the offense of the Rams, but DJ Chark is legit. DJ Chark has seven hundred touchdowns through the few, first few weeks and and while i believe he is legit that's just that's just not going to keep happening Got the with variable of a quarterback change coming Whereas robert woods doesn't have a touchdown well the, the to the quarterback change nick Foles is targeting week 11 okay so that's for in fantasy terms that's forever that's five years from now all right wrap it around aaron jones would you trade aaron jones for keenan allen aaron jones yes. is the player that actually has 700 touchdowns. yes i would trade him for team Keenan. dependent but in a vacuum yes i'd rather have keenan aaron jones for cooper cup yes 
you one hundred percent. I don't. So know you you'd rather have Keenan and Cooper despite running backs being you just talked about running backs being yeah, so but, important. But that that's a huge upgrade to me. And Aaron Jones, this is the ultimate. Would sell you sell high. high on him right now? Yes, sure. Like you both would. That situation was perfect. Aaron Jones is not getting four rushing touchdowns in a game again this year. Here's one thing I know about every league. Every league has a hardcore Packer fan. I've never ever <laughs> been in a league that doesn't have a hardcore Packer fan. Jamal, You'll buy the heck out of Aaron Jones. And do, do we have an update? Uh, we on, do. Yeah, Jamal Williams has still not cleared the concussion protocol heading into this week. But it's, so, con it's concussion protocol, which means – He should ja clear it. Jamal Williams will be back. Maybe it's not this week. Maybe it's next week. But Lafleur has proven he wants them to split touches so that this was an absolute – perfect situation for Aaron Jones against the Cowboys. Odell Beckham Jr. Wrap it around. Derek Henry for Odell Beckham Jr. Give me Henry. Gross. I'll take Henry. Uh, we should talk about Beckham. Uh, trade Devontae Adams for Josh Gordon and Odell Beckham Jr. I'll take Adams. I'll take uh, Beckham and Gordon. I will take Beckham and Gordon. Yeah. Uh, Beckham right now is obviously underwhelming to the maximum. We talked yesterday about you know, target share and air yards and average depth of target. They're all matched Amari Cooper, but he's he's had a problem. I mean, he's not helped your team four out of five weeks. Are you buying low on Odell Beckham? Yes. Okay. But I'm not trading away Devontae Adams, who should be back if not this week, next week. And Devontae, I'd, I'd rather have the powerhouse – in one slot, then kind of spread it across two. All right, Chris wants to know, Matt Breida for Mark Andrews. He has Tevin Coleman on his bench. Well, that's Would you rather have the combo or would you rather pick up Andrews? It, if my tight end situation is bleak, I guess I'm open to getting Andrews. I'm going to stick with Breida. Breida. Yeah, right. All right, Cooper Cup for David Johnson or Leonard Fournette? Yeah. Prefer Fournette, but I would, I'd be you willing. You would do that? I'd be willing to okay. do it, yeah. Uh, Chris Carson for Lev Bell and DK Metcalf? Yeah. Well, for both? Yeah. Hmm. I, I mean, Metcalf is, is arguably waiver fodder sure. depending on your week. Throw Metcalf out. Yeah, throw, would you do Chris out. Carson for Love Chris Bell? Chris Carson or Love Bell, which one do you want? I'd I, rather have Love Bell. I think it's really, really close. Yeah. So give me the guy who's passes by week. I'm picking up an extra week. Oh, man. So what 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 are you projecting for this Jets offense? I know it's been the, I think the gonna be, worst. I think they're going to be middle of the pack. A stat came uh, out yesterday. But I don't yesterday. think they're going to be that far below the Seahawks. I don't see the Seahawks as – as a top five offense. But aren't they right now? I'm saying on the season. You're saying oh. projecting for how things go. Yeah, I Chris Carson, part of that is believe it's just workload. You're believing that Lev Bell's gonna have more weekly carries than Carson, which is not a foregone conclusion. But Carson has some risk with Rashad Penny and with the fumbling. Uh there's a stat that came out yesterday. Christian McCaffrey averages more yards per drive than the Jets do. Yep. The Jets ever – that's how bad it's been, and Love Bell's still been passable. I believe that was J.J. Zachary. So yep, that, uh, it was. That out. Jordan Howard for Curtis Samuel? I would rather have Jordan Howard. I As am, would I. Yes, so I am selling Jordan Howard, but I think right now off the last few weeks you can get more than Curtis Samuel. I would not – he's not, you know, he's not get rid of. He's try to capitalize on T.Y. Hilton for Todd Gurley. Ooh. Yes, I would rather yeah, I'll have Gurley. I'll take, Gar I'll take Gurley there. Uh, Chris Godwin for Travis Kelsey. What do you make of Kelsey's start? Let's 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 go there. Sure. And what do you Godwin's make of his start, start to the season? He has not exactly taken advantage of you know the absence of Tyreek Hill. He's had some drops. He's had some strange plays. He's he has for what you got him to be. He is really disappointed. He has let you down. He sucked. He's the tight end three. You and, know what I mean? Like this is. This is him disappointing. So, do I think he's going to continue to disappoint as the season goes along? No. Yeah, I, I I think I would probably stick with Godwin. He has 439 receiving yards to Evan Ingram, who's second, 373. Travis Kelsey has one touchdown. That's literally everything for Travis Kelsey's disappointment is in the touchdown category. All right, last one: Sony Michelle or Cortland Sutton? Sony Michelle, I uh, I saw I saw question. this posted this morning. Um, Mike Taglier, I believe, brought this up. Sony Michelle faced an insane 62.5% uh, eight men in the box this past week when he produced eight, 16 carries for 91 yards and a touchdown. thought that was interesting. 
that he went up against a pretty stout defense and had a good game. Sonny Michelle or Cortland Sutton, I will I will side with the running back. This is to me a perfect example of if if there are two teams in the league and they need the opposite position, I would be willing to make this trade on both sides. I like Sutton, I like Sony. So if you need a running back, you got a uh, wide receiver depth or vice versa, do this trade in general, you side with the running back. Are you starting Sutton every week? Yes. I think he's yeah, I mean it depends on your options, but I think he's a startable player every week. Okay. Thursday night breakdown. All right, the Giants at two and three take on the Patriots at five and zero. Oh, the Patriots are sixteen and a half point favorites in this one. Big surprise there. Forty two and a half point over under. The Patriots implied point total is almost thirty. The Giants at thirteen. Daniel Jones, I'm so sorry that this is going to be a part of your story in hey, life. Hey, this is this is your time, Daniel Jones. You want to prove literally everyone in the world wrong because <laughs> even the people that drafted you right now are going, oh, crap. Yeah, this is not let, – let We ask, should not have started him yet. Let me ask you this. If Saquon and Evan Ingram are out of the game, who is the New York Giants' best player? Best player? Play, best Golden player. Tate. Golden Tate. Golden you're, not Tate. On, uh, you're talking offensive skill player, yes. right? Oh, it's Golden Tate. Golden Tate's a great wide receiver. Over Daniel Jones? Yeah. Okay. However, temper your expectations for Golden Tate and all of his friends in this one. <laughs> uh, you know, John, quote, just happy to be here. Hilleman. <laughs> Who put that in? That was Kyle. That's mean. I like it. <clears throat> of course you do. I didn't spend up on him. Uh, I don't know if I want to play him or not. You could probably do worse than the snaps that he'll get, but he was so – my problem is he was so unproductive last week in his snaps that what does the team believe is their best chance to run the ball? And if Elijah Penny gets more work than we think, it's possible. It's just kind of a depressing offensive situation for – the Giants. A successful game for New York is no one on their team gets hurt. Correct. Well, so don't play. Uh, they should not be playing they Saquon should not be, Barkley. Or Evan Ingram, who is practicing in a limited fashion. It's still possible Evan Ingram right. plays. They shouldn't do it. Your deep three, uh, your deep league dart throw of Darius Slayton exists on the outside. Uh, Golden Tate will be on the inside. Had 67% of snaps last week. Did nothing with them. Daniel Jones, from what we've seen so far, he is willing to to take a chance, throw the ball downfield. So I tend to think that you know your outside wide receiver ha is going to have your opportunity at a at production, your garbage time production that can exist. I wasn't sure where you were going with that because when you said he is willing to take a chance, take a risk, throw outside, my first thought is so, so this is great news for the Patriots D. <laughs> it, it it is great news for the Patriots D. I mean, obviously. Anyone who has the Patriots D, which you got to give the first quarter of the year MVP award to the Patriots D. They, 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 I mean, if you've got them, you're not losing a lot of games here. They're going to have another awesome matchup. Tom Brady, you're starting them. Sonny Michelle, James White, they're in your lineup. Yep. Julian Edelman, Josh Gordon, in yep. your lineup. Philip Dorsett, injury update. He didn't practice. He's not going to play this week. I don't expect him to play. Uh, Matt Lacoste at tight end. He ran 94% of snaps last week or he was out there for 94% of snaps. He actually ran 42 passing rounds, but it was Ryan Izzo that caught the touchdown. Matt but, Lacoste is the better bet for production. Yes. It's it's interesting. And they let go of Ben Watson, so we're bringing it up because maybe yeah. there's future plans here for Lacoste that we just haven't seen materialize yet. No door set in this game. That's what I wanted maybe to bring Maybe no Burkhead. Up. wanted to bring up the fact that they, they let Ben Watson go, and now maybe they're going to try and work Matt Lacoste into the, the game plan a little bit more. I don't advise it. In our NFL League One, we picked up Chris Herndon to play while Darren I am the Walrus is on his bye week. We may be playing Matt, <laughs> Matt Lacoste. So if you want to go down that slide of doom with us, have fun. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's going to be terrifying. We can hold hands. Uh, the Giants are allowing the fifth most passing yards per game at 279 a game. Patriots defense, as you mentioned, they're giving up just 160 passing yards per game. 
They have yet to allow a passing touchdown. Let's be real here. When you're playing Darius Slayton or Golden Tate, you're singing songs if you get four for 60. Yeah. If you're the Giants, how do you not put Eli back in? For oh this how! Game. Uh, oh, I mean, he has proven the ability to when, beat the Patriots when, they when you are, least expect it. When they are up against it, against the Patriots, Eli Manning comes through with one to two sensational plays that wins the game. How is, do you is, not think is about Plaxico it? Is Plaxico Burris available for this one? <laughs> or good old and, Moon and, Hands and Tyree, Get yeah. David Tyree back in here. Yeah, I mean they're on pace for seventy-seven sacks this year, which would be an NFL record. That famous 84 Bears defense had 72. Patriots Pshaw. defense. Now, if the Patriots defense get to play Washington and New York and these teams every week, it's going to look pretty nice. But are there any other big question marks out of this game? I mean, this is not a hard one to break down. This is the it, easiest game imaginable. These, I mean, it's so... For us and the Patriots? For for everyone out there. I mean, oof. You, you, you don't want to start a giant. I, I don't think, want to start Golden Tate. I don't want to start... Hilleman, I do think Hilleman ends up with five receptions. I've got one for you. If Burkhead is active, he's been limited. He's limited in practice, so there's a chance he's active. Do you take the shot on Burkhead, or do you just move on and not worry about the drama with the injury? No, I, I'm not I, playing him this week. I wouldn't either. He's been, you know, out and injured, and this isn't a matchup they need him for. Yeah. All right. We want to thank today's studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, and Austin Hooper signed jersey sold for $36. He gets no respect still. He's a tight end one, people. $36 yesterday at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. If you see our show on YouTube, which you can at youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers, you always see we've got some signed autograph memorabilia in the studio at all times. Brooks is kind enough to put a goose up on the wall today. Mike Evans signed jersey oh. up there. But uh, hundreds of daily auctions, you can check that out. Otherwise, we'll talk to you tomorrow. We've got the Thursday, Friday shows with matchups, starts of the week, and a whole lot more. Thank you for listening, supporting the show at jointhefoot.com, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, never forget that Pepsi takes all NFL celebrations to the next level, whether it's a Hail Mary touchdown, a defensive stop on the goal line, a Super Bowl win, going into Monday night. Have, have your fantasy team down one and a half points against Baker Mayfield, and then he puts up a negative two, and somehow you win in the most impractical, possible, fathomable way. You crack open that Pepsi. You crack open a Pepsi. Pepsi, the official sponsor of the NFL, reminds you to always be celebrating.